Hi friends, this is Bakappa. Welcome back to Test Rest Talk channel. So far you have seen how to set up the environment for REST Assured API testing and how to create the GET API request using REST Assured and then how to create POST API request using REST Assured. So while creating the POST API request, we have used the JSON object and we have used the file concept also and also we have used the POJOS to create the POST API request in the REST Assured API testing. And also we have created the put API request, patch API request, delete API request. And then we have discussed how to create the API chaining, how to pass the parameters into the API request. And also I have discussed how to validate the JSON schema. And finally, we have discussed how to create the multiple test ng suit files and how to execute it from the command prompt. In this chapter six of REST Assured API testing tutorial, I will discuss how to configure log4j for creating logs in the REST Assured API testing and then how to generate the log4j file in the REST Assured API testing. Then I will discuss how to print the stack test information into the log file. So when there is a failure in the test Then finally I will discuss how to write the any API request details and any API response details into the log4j log file in the REST Assured API testing. Let's start discussing about how to configure and how to generate the log4j file. So what you need to do is just you need to follow the three steps by following three steps you should be able to generate the log4j log file. So you can go to the google.com and here you can search for backup and github. And you can go to the my github repository here and in the repository section you can search for the log4j logging framework if you are not able to see this particular repository in the top you can search for just log4j so you will get the log4j logging framework repository you open that particular repository and in the readme.md file i have mentioned all the steps the first step is we need to add the one Maven dependency that is log4j, SLF4j, IMPL Maven dependency we have to add to the Maven, Maven project. And after that, we need to create the log4j 2 dot properties file under the resources folder. And we have to specify all these properties inside the log4j 2 dot properties file. And after specifying the all the properties, we can start creating the logs by using the logger reference variable. So if you look at here, so here we are using the log manager class and inside that we are calling to the get logger method and after that we are, we are specifying the current class name and followed by the dot class so that we can write create write or create the logs with respect to that particular class and by using this logger and we can directly we can log all the details. So we can ask we can add the debug details or we can add the uh, normal simple information into the log file and also we can add uh, warnings, portal errors, portal, portal details and error information also we can write into the log4j log file. So let's start adding the dip Maven dependency first and after that we'll create the log4j 2.properties file and we'll start creating the logs by using the logger reference variable. So here I will go to the google.com and we will add the Maven dependency. So here I'll say log4j slf4j impl Maven dependency. So here I will go to the Maven repository official website and here I will use the latest version that is 2.20.0. So let's copy this Maven dependency and I will go to the form.xml file. So inside the dependencies tag, so I will add the my Maven dependency. And after that, simply save the form.xml file. And after adding the Maven dependency, we need to create the log4j file that is inside the SRC test resources. So I will right click on this folder and I will say here file 
So here I'm specifying the file name as log 4j two dot properties. That's it. So here we got the log 4j two dot properties file. So let's copy the content from the GitHub repository. So I'll copy all these properties. and I'll paste it here. So let me copy it once again. So that's it. So if you look at here in the line number 19, so here we are specifying the location where we want to create the our log 4j log, log file. So here I have specified the dot followed by the logs folder. So automatically it will create the logs folder inside the our project and inside the logs folder it will create the App blocks dot text. So this path you can specify wherever you want to generate the log 4j log file. So that's it. So second step is done. So let's move on to the third step. So we need to start use, creating the logger reference variable by using that we can start creating the logs. So here I will go to the end to end epa test dot java class and I will maximize this one. And inside this e to e api request test. So before using the logger, so we need to create the logger reference variable here. So here I'll say private static final and followed by I'll say logger dot logger reference variable and here I'll say log manager dot get logger. So inside this we have to specify the current class dot class. So simply I will copy the current class name and I'll paste it here and I'll say dot class so that we can create the logs with respect to this particular class. So after that simply you can import the logger from the org dot apache dot logging dot log 4 j So that's it after importing. So we can directly use the logger reference variable by using this one we can write the logs into the log file. So here I will use this logger and inside this at the rate test method I will add the one log by using the logger dot here I'll say info and inside the info we have to specify the log name inside the string so here I'll say this particular test name followed by that I'll say test execution started that's it so simply I will copy the same line at the end of the test I will go and I will specify it as the test ended. So here, here I will say instead of started I will say ended. That's it. So we are done with all three steps. We have added the Maven dependency and second step is we have created the log 4j 2 dot properties file and third step is we have created the logger reference variable by using that we have created the two logs. So these two logs, this one and there is another one at the end of the test, these two logs has to be written into the log file, right? So now what I will do is simply I will go to the, so let's go to the same class, it looks like there is an error. So let's fix that error. So simply I will specify the semicolon there, that's it guys. So now what I will do inside the suits folder we have the rest assured api test.xml file. So this is a test ng suit file. So let's execute this suit file. So right now we are not able to see the logs folder inside here in our project. So after executing our suit file, so it will generate the logs folder and inside that it will create the app logs.txt file. So inside this text file we should be able to see the two logs what we have written in the api test. So let's execute this suit file. So let's open the console output and if you look at here, so with the timestamp it is adding the logs in the console output also. So this particular log what we have created in the beginning of the test and it is executing the all the API test inside that particular test method and at the end with, with the timestamp it is printing the last log what we have created. And if you look at here, so our test is passing, right? So after that, so now you need to refresh this particular project 
and you should be able to see the logs folder so if you look at here so there is a logs folder and inside that we have the app logs.txt file let's open that text file and if you look at here this text file so we are able to see the timestamp and followed by the class name and followed by the log name so this is how you can configure and generate the log4j log file so if you go to the console output so for example if i want to go to this particular line where i have created this particular log so simply you can click on this particular class name and it will take you to the class where this particular log is created also so if you click on that so this is where we have created the log so this is how we can configure and generate the simple log 4j log file so far you have seen how to configure the log 4j and how to generate the log 4j log file now i will discuss how to print the stack trace information into the log file for example whenever there is a failure in the test so we need to write the stack trace information into the log file so that we can debug the test faster so here i will fail this particular api test intentionally by passing the incorrect status code and i will execute this api test and you should be able to see the error information about the failure that is uh, nothing but the stack trace information about the failure so if you look at this failure and it is printing as the all the information about the validation failure right and it is printing as the expected status code is 100 and we are get, getting the 200 and also it is printing all the class details right so right now so it is just printing printing the logs it is not printing the all this stack trace information into the our log file so let's discuss how to implement the logic for printing the stack trace information into the log file so we can achieve by using the two ways first one is we can use the test ng listener and second one is we can use the at the rate after method so by using these two concept we can write the logs into the log 4j log file so let's let's discuss how to implement by using the at the rate after method so here i will go inside the base test class and here i will maximize this class and similarly i will add the at the rate after method so here we have added the at the rate before method and here i will create the one simple method that's public wide and i'll specify the method name as at the rate sorry i'll specify the method name as after method and i will surround this method with the at the rate after method so that's it you can import at the rate after method from the test ng framework and so to get the any test results uh, about it can be about the test pass or fail or even it can be the any stack trace information when there is a failure in the test to get that information so we need to pass the one argument here so that it will accept that information when there is a test got executed right so here i am specifying the i test result as the reference variable so by using this we can get the stack trace information and once we are having the stack trace information we can directly write, write into the log 4j log file right so let me maximize a bit little bit and after that so so this particular reference variable will hold the all the test information right so here i'll take this particular reference variable that is a result and i will use the if condition so inside this <coughs> i will use the result dot get status for firstly i will check the whether our test is getting failed or not so once i am having the failed status for the test simply i will get the stack trace information and i will convert that into the <coughs> sorry guys and then we will convert that into the string and simply we can write that string into the log 4j file so here we got the status and we have to compare with the failure by using this i test result so there is a enum available called failure so firstly we are checking where, whether our test is getting passed or failed and if in case our test failed then only i will have the stack trace information of the test right so that's the reason here this particular condition is true then only it will come inside this one 
and by using this result reference variable i am calling to the one method called get throwable so this is returning as the throwable type of data so simply i will save that into the throwable type so here i'll say throwable i'll say t that's it so now we are having the throwable by using this particular reference variable throwable type i can get the stack trace information so before that we have to convert stack trace information into the string right so that's the reason here i'm creating the object of the string writer here i'll say writer and i'll specify the new followed by that here i'm creating the object of the string writer then we can simply import this string writer so reason for creating this particular object is we can convert our stack trace information into the string so after creating the object of the string writer i will use the reference variable of the throwable by using that i will call to the print stack trace information so if you look at here the third method so we have the print writer so i will create the object of the print writer and inside this i will pass the string writer object so simply i will say here new here i'll say the print writer so that's it for this particular object print writer object i will pass the string writer object so that's it so let's try to add the some meaningful name so i'll say this one as a error so this particular string writer finally it contains the stack trace information so let's directly add that into the print writer object and simply i will import this particular print writer from the java.io and after importing it so simply i will use this error dot to string then we will get the stack trace information into the string that's it right so to write any logs into the log 4j log file so we have to create the logger reference variable so here i'll say private static and followed by that final and i will say the logger followed by that reference variable we are specifying it here i'll use the log manager dot get logger so inside this i will specify the current class dot class so that's it so we are having the so simply we can import it from the apache dot logging dot log 4j so now we are having the logger reference variable so by using this we can directly write the logs into the log file so i will use this particular log logger reference variable so by using this one i will say info so inside this we have to pass the string right so this particular string writer object contains the stack trace information simply i will say error dot to string so that's it so let's try to delete everything from the our log file so before we go ahead and execute the our ap test so i will open the app logs dot text file so simply i will delete all the stuff from the log file so that's it let's go to the our test ap test and let's execute this ap test and this time we should be able to see the stack trace information into the log 4j log file so if you look at the console output our test is getting failed and if you look at the reason so there is a mismatch in the status code so this is the expected failure so now let's refresh this maven project and let's open the app logs dot text file log file and if you look at here so all the information is printing over here right so if you look at this one so there is a assertion failure and also it is printing the all the details which we have seen in the console output right so this is how you can implement the logic for writing the stack trace information into the log 4j log, log file so far you have seen how to configure log 4j and how to generate the log 4j file and also we have seen how to write the 
stack trace information into the log file whenever there is a test failure. Now you will see how to write the any API request details and response details into the log4j log file. So here I'm opening the end-to-end API test.java class and here let's fail this API. So here what I will do is I will here I will go to the one of the API in the down and in the get API call. So here I'll pass the invalid booking ID. So here I'll pass some incorrect booking ID so that this get API call will fail and we will get the 404 status code. So automatically our test will get failed and let's execute this API test and we'll check the log file and then later we'll see how to implement the logic to write the API request details and API response details into the log4j log file. And let's check out this result. And if you look at here, the reason for failure is, so there is a mismatch in the status code. We are expecting 200, but we are getting the 404 status code. This is the expected failure. So now I will open the our log file. So if you look at here, so all the details are printing here, but we are not able to see the API request details and the API response details in the log file. So let's see how to implement the logic so that we can automatically write the API request details and the API response details into the log4j log file. So first let's create the one package under src test java and here I'm specifying the package name as testing dot here also listener so that's it so inside the same package i will add the class called rest assured listener so that's it i will click on finish so we got the class here so here we are implementing the one of the interface called filter so simply i will add the after the class name i will add the implements keyword so this keyword used for implementing any interfaces so here i have added the filter so that's it so you can do mouse over on the filter and you can import it from the io dot rest dot filter and after importing the filter, you need to add the unimplemented methods. So after most who are on the rest assured listener, so you will get the, this particular option, add unimplemented methods, simply click on that link. And here you will get the this particular method added automatically. So that's it guys. So now, so let's write the simple code here, just two lines of code. So that will print the API request details and the API response details. So simply I will use the filter context reference variable and by using that here I'm calling to the method called next. So inside this we have to specify the filterable request specification and the filterable response specification, right? So already these reference variables are present in the this particular method only. So simply copy this request spec reference variable and pass on to the next method. And similarly, let's copy the response spec and paste it here. That's it. So if you look at this next method, so this is returning as the response type of data. So I will assign back to the response type of data. That's it. So we have the response. So by using this request spec, we can get the any API request details by using this re response variable, we can get the any, any API response details. So once we have these two variables, we can get the all the re API request details and the response details. So before we go ahead and use this particular class in the API test, let's implement the logger for this particular class. So here I'll say private static final and followed by that, I'll say logger and here I'll use the log manager dot get logger. So inside this, I will specify the current class name that is rest assured 
listener dot class so that's it so first let's see how to implement the logic whenever there is a test failure then only we will log the api request details and the response details so this is the first case we will see then in the second case irrespective of the test failure or a pass we will log the api request details and the api response details so let's import the logger so that's it so by using this logger object we can write the logs so let's see let's assume so so here i'm writing just if condition so in this condition in this if condition i will specify so here i'll take this ref, res, response variable and by using this response variable here i will call to the method called get status code so if status code is not equal to 200 then only you will write we will write the api request details and the response details into the log file otherwise we are not we are not writing anything into the log file so similarly i will add the another status code comparison that is 201 so in this case you can specify all your valid api response status codes so if that particular code is not matching for example if i am getting 400 4, 401 404 so in that case so this condition will be matching and it will come inside this if condition and it will write all the logs into the log 4j file so right now we have we have the condition ready so let's use the logger by using the logger object here i'm calling to the method called error because we are calling to the method called error so we are writing the logs whenever there is a failure only right so that's the reason here i'm calling to the error method so inside this we can specify the all the details it can be which type of method and what is the uri and what is the request body and what is the response we got it from the application server so now here what i will do is simply we have to specify the strings here inside the error method of the logger so let's print the first so here i'm writing first backslash n and followed by the method so let's add the method that is nothing but the which http method we are going to call it so we can get the http method by using the request spec reference variable we can call to the method called get method so this returns us the method name so that's it simply i will add the plus and similarly let's add the another data that is the uri so here i'll say uri and followed by that so let's add a little bit different so that we can easily identify in the logs so here i'll say equal to and greater than symbol after the method and the uri and here let's call to the get uri so this will return us the uri of the api request and once we are having the method name uri so let's add the request body also into the log file so here i'll say request body and here i'll call the get body so that's it so so far we have added the all the api request details so we'll also add the response details also so similarly i will copy this whole line and i will call to the by using the response a reference variable i will call to the method called get body and after get body i will call to the method called pretty print so it will print the actual data of the response so here i'll add it as a response body so that's it so at the end of this method filter method we have to return we have to return the so if you look at the return type of this particular method it is a response type so that's the reason here i'm returning the reference variable of the re response and the line number 20 simply i'll copy this response reference variable and i'll return the same res response variable that's it sorry guys uh, let me delete this whole line so this is what this is all about the implementation so whenever there is a test failure and if we get the status code as a 400 401 404 in that case it will enter inside this if condition 
then it will print in the form of error all the details that is a uh, method name uri request body and the response body so let's go back to the our test and we will simply add this particular class in the api test so here i will go to the our end to end api test and so that's all about the implementation now we are using the rest assured listener java class in the api request so here you can come to the api details where you have called to the apis so first here we are making the post api call so after the given so simply here we can call to the dot filter so inside the filter we have to specify the object of the class which we have just created that's the rest assured listener class so that's it simply copy that simply you we have to specify the object of the rest, rest assured listener and that's it so let's specify it for the event get call so for the post api call we have specified the dot filter and inside that we have created the object of the our rest assured listener class so similarly we will do it for the get api call also so here i'm saying after the given so simply i will specify the dot filter and inside this we will create the object of the rest assured listener so that's it so this is what the simple implementation what we have to do for writing the any api details into the log file so let's open the log file we will make sure that uh, our log file is clear and let's execute our api test now so if you want you can include this particular filter this particular filter into the other apis also we have the token api put api patch api and delete api so it will work fine if there is any failure automatically it will print uh, all the api request details and the response details into the log file so let's execute this api test and now we should print all the api request details and the api response details so because we have the test failure while validating the status code so let's look into the console output so if you look at here so our test got failed with the expected status code mismatch right so we got the 404 but we are expecting the 200 as a status code so let's open refresh this man project and then we will open the log file so if you look at this log file so there's a failure there is a mismatch in the status code uh, expected is 200 but we are getting the 4, 404 so this is the expected failure and if you look at in the line number three so it is printing us the method and this is a uri it is trying to hit it so here we have passed the invalid number so that it will return us the 404 status code and because it is a get api call we have not specified anything in the request body and in the response we got the not found so this is how you can print the api request details and the response details into the log 4j log file so let's see how to write the api request details and response details details irrespective of the failure or failure or the passing right so now i will go back to the our rest assured listener java class so simply i will comment the line number 22 and the line number 29 right so instead of printing error here simply you can print it as the info right so this is a generic line you can add it to print the logs into the log 4j so let's clear the log 4j log file and we should be able to see all the details so if you look at in the api test first we are making the post api call which has the uh, method and the uri and the api request body and the it will get the even response details also right and then while calling to the get api call by using the booking id so it will get failed but before you should be able to see in the log file all the details of the post api calls and also in the log file you should be able to see the get api calls also but uh, as you have seen so there is a no request body and uh, there are many other details are missing there but so you should be able to see the all the details from the post api call in the log file 
So let's execute this API test once again. Now we should be see all we should be able to see the all the API details in the log file. So let's look into the our test results. So there is a failure. This is the expected one. And let's check out the reason. So there is a mismatch in the status code. So this is the expected failure. So let's look at the our log file now. So if you look at this log file, so first it is printing as the method that is a post and this is a URI it is hitting and this is a request body we are sending and then this is the response body we are getting it from the application server and if you look at the next details, so there is a failure and also it is printing all the details here. So this is how you can implement the logic to print the API request details and the response details into the log4j log file in the rest assured API testing. This is Bakapa. Welcome to API testing full course. You can access all the exercise which we have done in the whole API testing course. I have already provided this link in the video description. So anyone can access this link and also you can get the whole collections and also the environment variable details. So you can take that URL which is there in the description of this below video and paste it in the web browser. And after that, so once it is opened, so you need to export this uh, collections into the your local system. So it will open like this after ex accessing the link. So this is a public access URL which which I have shared it. You can <clears throat> click on this booking API. You can see all the APIs are there inside the two folders. So what you can do is you can click on this three dots and you can export it. So you can click on this export and firstly you can export this booking API collection and after that on the right side you can select the booking API environment and after that click on this icon and click on the edit then you can click on three dots and you can click on this export. So this will export the environment variable details. So after exporting it so you will get the these two files. And once once you have the, these two files, you can go to the Postman and you can click on this import and make sure you are there in this uh, file tab and you can click on choose files and you can select the firstly collection that's the Postman collection and you can open it and after that you can click on import. So firstly you can load the Postman collection and after that you can load the environment details. So as I have already these APIs in my system, I don't want to import it. And this is how you can get the exercise which we have done in the API testing full course. You can find all the code which I have discussed in the rest assured API testing full course. You can search with the backup and GitHub in the google.com. And here you can go to the my GitHub repository. And over here in the repositories tab, you will find the rest assured api testing framework you can go inside the this repository and you can click on this code and you can copy this uri and by using this uri and you can simply use the git in your local machine and you can simply clone it by using the git clone and followed by that specify the url so you will get the whole code which i have discussed in the rest assured api testing full course